Nikon's still not allowing any other major brands like Sigma or Tamron to make auto-focusing lenses for mirrorless Nikon Z cameras, but Vilchox somehow managed to get around that and give us a series of full-frame and APS-C auto-focusing lenses, and this one is one of them, Vilchox 35mm f1.8. This is a third full-frame Vilchox lens after 85mm and 24mm that I have a pleasure to shoot with, and I really shouldn't be surprised anymore. This is quality. Don't skip, keep watching to find out more about it and if it is worth considering instead of much more expensive Nikon equivalent. Full frame 35mm wide aperture, small light autofocusing on all Z mount mirrorless Nikon cameras and really, really well priced. It all sounds too good to be true, but Viltrox have been doing this for a while, making great quality budget friendly primes for several different mounts, including Nikon. 35mm is one of those focal lengths, especially when it comes to primes, that's a little more versatile than most. It's not wide, but wide enough, perfectly suitable for when shooting indoors, but also great for portrait and as an universal prime for most of situations when 24mm is too wide or 50mm is too tight. Kind of obvious. This lens does work very well and it delivers really good results. Super sharp, even wide open, corner to corner sharp, if that's what you need in your photos when closing the aperture down, just like with all the lenses. Good color and contrast and a lens that doesn't feel cheap at all. There is fair amount of color fringing chromatic aberration visible when shooting towards bright light sources, but not tragically bad and totally fixable most of the time in post, if that, if that really bothers you. I've noticed much worse chromatic aberration on multi-million Hollywood productions shot with lenses that cost thousands, and I really think that chromatic aberration isn't that big deal. Unless you shoot astro or maybe some other type of specialist photography, that this could be a deal breaker. Otherwise, for day-to-day -day creative and professional photography, this lens doesn't deliver unusual or more than usual chromatic aberration than much more expensive lenses than this. There's also some bulging when shooting raw photos, but that again is not unusual and super easy to fix in post. When shooting JPEG or video, this should be corrected by the camera internally. Overall, this lens delivers results that are, that are not inferior or bad in any way, quite the opposite. I really think this lens is more than good enough for professional work. I even dare to say that it is one of the best budget primes that you can get in this focal range and at this price range for sure. Minimum focusing distance is about 40 centimeters, very standard for 35 millimeter lenses. Not exactly a perfect for close-up photography, but good enough to get close-ish. I have been using these old Sigma magnifying filters with several different lenses for, for ages. They don't make them anymore, but you can still find them on eBay easily. This basically reduces your minimum focusing distance by half, allowing you to, to get closer if, if that's what you, what you need. In all the time shooting with it, I never had to fight it to achieve results I wanted, and the images were easy to, to edit. The auto-focusing is good, quick, and silent. No problems with tracking, eye tracking, or acquiring focus in the specific place. It all behaves as it meant to, and that's what anyone really wants from a lens especially a budget-friendly one like this. This lens performs very well when filming. Autofocus, again, doesn't feel any different or slower than when shooting with Nikon lenses, and I would have no problem filming with it at paid gigs. I could certainly trust it to deliver consistently good results because it does deliver consistently good results. Quality 
nice, slick and good looking design. All hard plastic, all standard. There's no buttons on the lens, not even basic auto manual focus switch, nothing, no buttons. There's clickless aperture ring that can be used manually or in auto mode, so you can control aperture on the lens or via the camera. I guess more and more of these lenses from different brands feature this, this feature to, <laughs> to turn the aperture ring without the clicks to use it when filming to control the brightness width. This one is smooth, but maybe a little bit noisy. Making plastic on plastic, rubbing sound when turned. But I don't really know why would anyone use aperture ring to control the brightness of video on wide aperture lens like this. I personally, for that, I personally use ND variable filters to maintain desired depth of field so it makes no difference if the aperture ring on the lens is clickless or not. I use the ND variable filter to control the brightness width. Most photographers though prefer clicks so, so you can actually feel how much you turn it without looking at the lens when having your camera to your face. The focus ring is nice and firm and almost, almost silent. Again, not a big problem especially when considering the price of this lens. It's a light lens weighing only 370 gram, same as the Nikon version. In fact, it is about the same size as well, but it has got smaller filter thread of 55 millimeters. No in lens stabilization or weather sealing, important in some situations, but not a deal breaker for everyone. The lens also features a USB-C socket for future firmware updates. No need for expensive docks, just plug and play. Value for money, just under 300 pounds, making it less than half price of the Nikon version. Is the Nikon lens twice better than, than this? Maybe it is a little better build, but that's about it. This lens delivers results that are on par with any premium brand lenses from Nikon, Sigma, Tamron or, or even Sony. This price makes it an incredible value for money, affordable alternative that is capable of delivering great results, especially that you take into the consideration that there's no other autofocusing lenses available for Nikon Z mount cameras apart from Nikon own expensive option or all the F mount Nikon lenses that you'd have to use with FTZ adapter. No adapter here, straight to the camera. Conclusion. It is another great and affordable lens from a brand that more people should know about. Even though it is quite cheap, the price doesn't affect the quality it delivers. And it's not just good looking images and video, but also good autofocusing and a decent, decent build quality. The only thing stopping anyone from choosing this instead of the Nikon would be the name, the brand that people are not familiar with, not the actual difference in quality it delivers, because there is hardly any difference. The lack of weather sealing could be a problem if you shoot in wet conditions a lot or in a desert, but for under $300 it is not a big issue in my opinion. Nikon 35mm lens is for sure very good, they all are, but is it twice better than this? I really doubt it. I really like this 35mm and it is the one that will be staying on my Z6 a lot recommend it. And this is it from me. I hope this video was in any way helpful and informative. And if it was, please give me the thumbs up, consider subscribing and see you next time. Perfectly suitable for shooting indoors, but also great for portrait as an answer. Rewind. Hello. I even dare to say that this is one of the best budget primes that you can get in this focal range and at this price range, price range for sure, rise range, range. range. <laughs> range. <laughs> Nikon lens is for sure very good, I run out of breath again. Affordable alternative that is capable, capable, and it's a wrap. <laughs>